progress is still being made on the colonizing Mars front, while SpaceX and friends continue to focus on Earth's current problems. New Falcon contracts are signed as the Starlink constellation grows, and we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX. <clears throat> SpaceX in the news. Even though SpaceX has shifted focus from Starship to Starlink, given the Ukraine-Russia war, work is still being done at Starbase to continue the company's efforts of colonizing Mars before Earth gets nuked first. On Tuesday night, venting from Starship 20 and the supporting ground equipment was spotted by Lab Padres cams, and the following evening Super Heavy Booster 4's reaction control system thrusters passed gas as well. Its successor, Booster 7, resides in the high bay up Highway 4 and had its two halves stacked on Thursday morning. With each new vehicle comes small tweaks and changes, like in Seven's case the positioning of its COPVs, nose cones have been further streamlined, and parts for hosting payloads have been getting attention as well. Between all that, and the upgraded quick disconnect systems, and the fact that Booster 7 will possibly house 33 Raptor 2 engines instead of 29 Raptor 1s like Booster 4, it's safe to say we're on the verge of seeing some pretty interesting rockets roll out of the construction yard in the coming months. Over at the Roberts Road facility in Florida, SpaceX is pressing forward with the construction of their new Star Factory building, laying out the foundation. And the expanded wing of Hangar X is definitely taking shape. Hangar X will be used for storing and refurbishing Falcon 9s, while Star Factory will focus on East Coast Starship production, for which the newest orbital launch and integration tower is now sprouting vertically. They must be watering it adequately. That's botany joke. I tip my hat to Lab Padre and friends who made this B-roll possible definitely show them some love and support for their efforts. I mean, we would all like their aerial snoopage to continue, right? Their links are in the description below. SpaceX has signed a multi-launch agreement with AST Space Mobile to transport the company's first production satellites off the planet and into orbit on Falcon 9. AST is building the world's first and only cellular broadband network in space that basically turns their users' standard cell phones into satellite phones using 3GPP standard frequencies. This summer, Falcon will launch the Blue Walker 3 test satellite, but the new arrangement also covers the launch of the first Bluebird sat and provides a framework for future launches. Time to let the American broomstick fly and hear the sounds of freedom. LD is go for launch. And lift off Falcon 9, 11, 4, 10. On Wednesday morning, SpaceX launched another 48 of their own Starlink satellites on a converted Falcon Heavy side booster. This was the first stage's fourth mission, second since its transition, and it landed successfully on the drone ship ashore fall of Gravitas. About an hour later, SpaceX confirmed the payload was deployed nominally. The next Starlink mission is slated for March 18th, subject to change of course. Space News reported that the U.S. military is taking notes on the Constellation's success in Ukraine. During a Senate Armed Services Committee, General James Dickinson of U.S. Space Command said, quote, What we're seeing with Elon Musk and the Starlink capabilities is really showing us what a mega constellation or a proliferated architecture can provide in terms of redundancy and capability. A second shipment of Starlink user terminals arrived in Ukraine this week, along with the equipment needed to run them in blacked out areas, like solar and battery packs built by Tesla. The Polaris Dawn team also showed their support for the people of Ukraine by personally delivering medical supplies and other aid via Jared's private jet. Quote, the Polaris Dawn crew will take this Ukrainian flag to a place in space that still remains beyond the reach of tyranny. They didn't say if they were also bringing any of Ukraine's suspect US-funded biolab research with them. Nah, they don't exist, guys. Thaki and her media cronies said so. Elon, the lawyer wife, told me to tell you, you gotta get a move on it with a Martian lifeboat, bro. She also said there's no need to save a seat for Kevin. Kevin, damn it. It's going to be fine, guys. We may be on the precipice of World War III, but NASA wants the world to know that they are committed to supporting the right of their employees to be addressed by their preferred pronouns. Right. This is why the world has come to see you as SpaceX's bitch. But also why nobody takes America serial anymore. Nobody will listen to me but serial! But speaking of NASA, their over-budget moon rocket is today's honorable mention. NASA is currently prepping their first space launch system rocket to roll out to the launch site for a wet dress rehearsal on March 17th. This week, they began rolling back the VAB's walkway surrounding the Super Heavy Lift vehicle, after which it will crawl its ass to 39B. Its mission is Artemis 1, a test flight to the moon and back in preparation for future manned flights aboard the Orion spacecraft. Expected to launch no earlier than May of this year. For this flight, to be clear, God only knows when humans will hop on board Artemis 2. 
Although there will be no passengers aboard this first rocket, NASA and friends will be studying radiation effects on crash test dummies as their primary payload, and hosting more than a dozen CubeSats as secondary payloads. Orion will spend six of the mission's 25 and a half days in a retrograde orbit around the moon before returning to Earth using the familiar shields and shoots technique bra, splashed down within eyesight of the Naval Recovery Fleet. Great job out there, bra. Earlier this month, it was widely reported that an auditor within the agency found the rocket's cost to be about double that which was suggested just a couple years ago. Color me shocked. Keep in mind, SLS is a throwaway rocket. It's not reusable. Quote, We've found that the first four Artemis missions will each cost $4.1 billion per launch, a price tag that strikes us as unsustainable, said Paul Martin, NASA Inspector General, during a meeting with the House Subcommittee on Space and Aeronautics. But I, yeah, okay. What? <laughs> well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for checking in. High five to those of you supporting the channel by participating in our locals community. You all have a nominal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed.